earring. I can't find it. Well, don't look at me. I wasn't wearing it. Well, I should hope not. Now, let me see. Where would I hide if I were an earring? Ah! I gotcha. <laughs> I thought you were going downstairs. I am. To see how she looks before she goes out. Boy, what a dingling. You ought to know what your mother looks like by now. Yeah, but when she goes out with Mr. Bruce, she always looks extra special. She does, and I guess I'll wait, too. sure I know what's going on, but I take it the gentlemen approve? They sure do. Come on, old G wagon one. Corey, no goodnight kiss? In front of him? Earl J. Wagadon will just have to get used to it. Well, don't kiss him too long or we'll miss Captain Blastoff. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. When we grow up, will we have to go out with girls, too? I don't know. What else can we go out with? Well, the lady's almost on time. Almost? You're not going like that. You're not going like that. I'm not going to wear a tux to go bowling. Bowling? Well, sure. Ten pins? A ball? <laughs> On your feet, partner. It's up to you to carry the team. Uh, Steve, maybe I better try this some other night. Oh, no, no, you don't. Tonight's tonight. How about a game? Yeah. Right. Steve, I've never even done this before. There's nothing to it. Just slip your fingers in these holes. Put your left hand under the ball for support. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Ball a few inches from your body. Huh? Step off with your right foot. Left, right, left, slide. Set it down easy and follow through. Now we start from back here. playing for keeps. make me laugh. You couldn't even beat my little sister. Wise guy! You think we can beat Richard's little sister? coming tonight. Will you please finish setting the table? Mom, can I ask you something? 
Oh, not now, dear. Later. Hello, young lovers. Oh, it's so good to see you, oh, Julia. Oh, now you look marvelous. Hey, aren't you going to say something nice about me? Don't you dare. He's spoiled enough as it is. <laughs> Bunny, you look almost as marvelous as Hannah. Well, second best isn't too bad, as long as my wife is first. <laughs> Thank you. Corey! Oh. Hello, Mrs. Yarby. It's Mrs. Henderson now. Right. Let's put this on ice. Uh. Well, and how's everything in the wonderful world of Corey Baker? Not so good, Mr. Henderson. Oh? Well, suppose you sit down and tell me all about it. Well, there's this tough guy, Richard. Bunny, would you come in the kitchen and car, please? Uh, we'll talk about it later, son. They're calling me in surgery. Nobody listens. Hmm. Syracuse was never like this. Oh, it's going to be after Hannah gets there. She has a magic touch in the kitchen. I hope I haven't lost it. We've been married four weeks, and I haven't even had a chance to boil water for Bunny yet. Oh, Hannah, relax and enjoy. You're still on your honeymoon. Don't worry, you'll cook plenty of meals after we get home. We're leaving tomorrow, Julia. Home. It'll probably seem a little strange at first. You'll love it. After all, as my mother used to embroider on samplers, home is where the heart is. It certainly is. And my heart lives in Syracuse. <laughs> Corey, uh, tell me about this Richard character. How old is he? Going on 11. He clobbered us. He did? Well, don't worry. A bully always meets his match. Somebody will come along who's just a little tougher and he'll pin Richard's ears back. I don't know, Mr. Henderson. He's the best marble shooter in the whole school. Marble shooter? Oh, well, then you and Earl will have to work hard at it until you can give Richard some real competition. I don't think we'll ever beat Richard at marbles. Well, how can you tell until you try? What's the use? Well, now, son, marbles is a kid's game, but uh, if you're going to quit when things get tough, well, then a kid's game becomes important. But Richard's better than we are. Well, somebody's always going to be better than we are. But that's no excuse for not trying to be as good as we can be. Suppose me and I'll lose. <laughs> that's part of life. Now, the only thing to be ashamed of is if you get called out on strikes without even taking your bat off your shoulder. Okay, Mr. Henderson. We'll let Richard beat us again. Oh, no, you won't. You know something? What? I'm gonna help you lads beat the pants off that guy, Richard. You will? How? My boy, shake hands with Shot Henderson, the ex-Public Park Marvel champ of Syracuse, New York. Wow, we. <laughs> when was that? Oh, uh, a few months ago. Uh, <laughs> well, let's just say I retired undefeated at the age of 10. Come on, collect all your mibs, aggies, and bullseyes. We'll get Earl, because this old master's going to turn you guppies into a couple of sharks. Come on. Now, you always hold your shooter between your thumb and your first finger. Hmm? Now, you got a good firm grip on it? Okay, fine. Then, you draw a bead on your target, and you release your shooter with a flick of the thumb, like so. Anna, I still can't get over how terrific you look. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly a sex symbol, but you'd better believe that I am one darn happy woman. I believe you really have that marvelous glow. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up at night, maybe coming out of a troubled dream. Then I feel Bunny near me, and I go back to sleep, comforted and secure, knowing that I'm not alone anymore. Someone I love is there. I know. That's the way it was. He loves donuts, hates broccoli and bananas, and insists that he never snores. <laughs> He's kind and tender. And if he reveals his deepest feelings, he isn't afraid it will make him seem like less of a man. Well, enough of that. <laughs> How are you and that young man coming along, Julia? Oh, which, uh, 
Young man is that? Now, don't play games with me. You know exactly which young man, young lady. Steve Bruce? I have a good hunch he's going to turn out to be Mr. Wright. Well, that would still leave me with a problem. What's that? How do I convince him that I'm Mrs. Wright? <gasps> then you are making some progress. Well, not much, but sometimes I wonder if Steve and I really have the proper chemistry. And frankly, he's turned on by a few things that just turned me off. Like what? Like bowling. Can you imagine me the Amazon of the alleys? Well, why not? If you can picture me as Hot Rod Hannah riding around in a hopped-up crate, oh. 350 cubes, four on the floor, with a drop-head engine and four-barrel carbs. Oh, what drag strip have you been hanging around? <laughs> Bunny's a sports car buff. No. And that's just one of his hobbies. I am starting to learn all about breeding tropical fish, about tweeters and woofers, uh, collecting matchbook covers, and studying Italian. Mm, you have been busy. Well, of course. If you really care about a man, naturally you want to share his interests and hobbies. I suppose he gets interested in free-fall parachute jumping. That could be my next project. Oh. <laughs> Now you try it, Corey. Wow! Now you, Earl. I did it! By George, I think they've got it. When do we see that Richard tomorrow? Boy, we'll murderize her. Oh, no, let's not rush it, man. Just keep on practicing till you're real sharp, then go out and get them. I guess you're right, Mr. Henderson. Sure he is. He's the champ. Corey, is something the matter with your hand? Uh-uh. I'm building up my thumb muscles. You're not training to become a hitchhiker, I hope. Mr. Henderson says you got to have a strong thumb order to be good at marbles. Oh. Hannah tells me he used to be an expert at marbles. Used to be. He's still a dead eye. Me and Earl are going to the park after school and practice. We're going to myrtleize Richard. Are you two still bugged because Richard beat you at marbles? Oh, Corey, it's just a game. I know, but Mr. Henderson says if you quit it again, you can quit it other things, too. Mr. Henderson has a point there. What else did he say? Oh, a lot of stuff. He said if you go to the plate, it doesn't matter if you strike out as long as you swing your bat. That's not bad advice about life or bowling, either. Bowling? Mr. Henderson was talking about marbles. He said for me and Earl to practice real good, and then pow! Goodbye, old Richard. Mm. It's open. Well, good morning, Earl. What are you so mad about? Him. He's slower than molasses. My dad's waiting for us in the patrol car. Oh, boy. See you later, Mom. What is this, a stampede? We're going to school in the police car. Earl, you know your father's taking the old family clunker this morning. Boy, what a fibber. Yeah, but it worked, didn't it? Come on, slowpoke. <gasps> Good morning, Marie. Would you like some coffee? I hope it's not too strong. I can use it. Uncle Charlie was over last night. He stayed late. Oh, is that the one with those dull, long-winded stories? That's Uncle Charlie. Mm. Oh, I'm going to wake you. <laughs> Sorry we missed the newlyweds. How's Hannah? Just beautiful. Her marriage is the biggest success since Patty Holmes. <laughs> Great. That proves there's still some justice. Oh, she was so cute and full of advice. What kind of advice? About how to build a better man trap so that Steve Bruce will beat a path to my door. What did Hannah tell you that I already haven't? 
Oh, the bit about sharing your man's hobbies. And believe me, Bunny Henderson has so many interests. Mrs. Henderson is going to have a very busy life. Don't mark it. When I think of all the things I shared with Leonard before I got him. Mm -hmm. How about bowling? Love it. You do? I didn't know you bowled. Well, not lately, but I used to have 175 average. Is that good? Listen, chum. Before Leonard and I were married, we were runners-up in the police department mixed doubles. Marie, fate has sent you to me. I need you. You are going to help me. Well, okay, but how much do you expect for one measly cup of coffee? If the way to Steve Bruce's heart is through a bowling ball, you're going to teach me how to throw one. Mr. Chegley says I've got an acute case of the bowler's bends. He says I'm beginning to walk like Groucho Marx. Oh, don't worry. Oh. I'll have you straightened out in no time. Oh, Marie, that feels so good. Lower, lower. Oh. How's that? That's fabulous. You've given my back the will to live. <laughs> Hi, me and Rosie Wagadorn are ready. Yeah, we're gonna beat that... Richard. a boy. Bring home the marbles. So long. It's a big Saturday for the bakers. Mr. Bruce doesn't know it, but he's in for a big surprise, too. Let's not get carried away. The idea is to share your man's hobbies, not beat him at his own game. Beat Steve Bruce? Me? I should live so long. <laughs> Marie, don't stop, please. Steve, aren't we going bowling? No, just because I happen to be a bowling nut, there's no reason why I should inflict it on you. Oh, but I like bowling, really, I do. Come on, Julia, you know you hate it. But I don't, honest, Steve. You're such a great little sport, but you don't have to pretend any longer. I am not pretending. Believe me, I want to go bowling. Sure. Now go change your clothes. I'm going to make it all up to you. Old Steve is going to spring for the kind of lunch he wishes he could afford. <laughs> change. Wear something sexy. Because, baby, when you see the view from the place I'm taking you, you'll want to do crazy things. What makes you think they haven't? We double dare you to play us. We triple dare you. Uh, marbles is kid stuff. You shrimps play. I've got a brand new game. After all that practice, I'm disgusted. Me too. Earl J. Wagador. What? I guess we're just gonna have to learn how to play paddleboard as good as Richard. Yeah, but how are we gonna do it? Practice, I guess. Maybe if we had someone like Mr. Henderson to teach us. Yeah, but he went back to Syracuse with his wife, Mrs. Yarby. Oh. Hey, you're O.J. Wagner. What? Maybe we could write to Mr. Henderson and he could give us paddleboard lessons by mail. Hey, that's a good idea. But first, I'll play you a game of marbles. What for? The winner gets to play Richard's little sister. <laughs> <laughs> 